Welcome to another episode of Business as Unusual, where we provide how-tos and tips and all kinds of resources, not just to let your business succeed, but to flourish and get you wherever you want to go. Today, I'm very excited because we've got Jess Duell, and Jess is a special guest. I actually met her through LinkedIn of all crazy things. It was through an introduction and fine tuning, and this just shares with you how easy it is to connect with valuable resources such as Jess. Jess is the Chief Operating Officer of Red Direction, which really works with operations and strategies with, of clients. Jess, thanks for coming on this ship. I love it. Today we're talking about embracing crazy which is my favorite thing to talk about because that's really what I do in the good times and the not so good times like right now when we have to be unusual and we have to think out of the box. I appreciate you inviting me, Ingrid. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you specifically had said, it's just like it's dealing with things during crazy. What define crazy times? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. To me, there, anytime you have unusual amounts of uncertainty, Right. So like right now, businesses are faced with for, at first, we didn't know if we were going to have to close or not. Then we were closed. And then what do we do? And then how long do we stay closed? And do we have enough cash flow to get through? And if we waited until that point to start thinking about it, it's a whole other compound of uncertainty. And then how do we show up for what's next, knowing what we have to move through right now? So the crazy, the crazy, crazy, really, it comes down to uncertainty. And sometimes we can put a shape around that. Hi, that's a, that is the, I, I, I get it. Crazy is like, what happens? What does it mean? So what are some of the biggest challenges that businesses do face during these crazy times? You know, I was just reading an article the other day and it was a sur survey results from Goldman Sachs who has been interviewing small businesses. There were two statistics that really stuck out to me that pertain to your audience. The first was, and this was, by the way, in, in the middle of March, so we're a little bit past that now. I found this and, and this, the survey was in the middle of March. The first stat was most companies did not feel confident that they had enough cash flow if this crisis lasted longer than three months. Right. Right. And the second one, the second stat, which I thought was most interesting, was that any plan that a company had in these small businesses, only 13% felt like they had a plan that incorporated this, any part, any kind of uncertainty, let alone this extreme uncertainty. So what is that? Is that 78%? I, I don't do math very well I'll, uh, in my head. I like spreadsheets and, and pre-calculated <laughs> things. Automation, here's to yeah, automation. That's right. Yep. That, that's right. So, the, but 13% of, of small businesses have a plan. Oh, most businesses have some sort of a plan, but only 13 have a plan that actually incorporates uncertainty. So most, what I have found and the most big, the biggest obstacle is in good times, we don't think about uncertainty because it's good. We don't have to, we've got other things we can focus on. And it, so that means in the times of uncertainty, like where we are now, there tends to be a scarcity mindset. There tends to be a contraction mindset of just um, saving money, turning, turning inward and like hibernating a little. Well, when a plan incorporates uncertainty and when a leader's skills have the capacity for uncertainty, it makes it much, much easier to navigate this because we get, we have our own crazy, let alone our company's crazy. And being able to increase our capacity allows us to navigate all of that. It is, it's, it's, it's about contingency planning, right? And it expands way beyond just cash flow and having the cash. Of reserves. course. It's also the what ifs. And we've seen so much of today's companies switching to virtual, right? When they didn't know mm -hmm. how to do that or curbside service, which that's a new endeavor or what, what do we do with, with clients and customers that do need to come inside? How do we protect our employees? Yes. And, and you're right. Just that thinking inside the box is so limiting and, and, and the scarcity that you've mentioned, it's, it's a fear based and it just gets us stuck. So it really does. I've heard you talk about, present retreat and how that allows expansion. Mm -hmm. 
what have you found? What, what is this anyway? And how do you use it? How do you use it with it and apply it with your clients? Yeah. So I did this for myself first. And once I realized how valuable it was for me, I understand. So some people might recognize the phrase CEO time. Well, my CEO time is very structured and we call it a present retreat because present has two meanings. It's a gift and we're in the moment. And as well as retreat has a few meanings. Retreat could be a, like a spa day, a way to relax and take a look around and soak it all in. And a retreat means to pause. It doesn't mean necessarily to go backwards. It means to pause and take stock. And so the present retreat really encompasses all four of those elements. And when I started doing the present retreat, it took me, it actually took me like six to eight weeks before I, I actually had a really good present retreat four un uninterrupted hours of only mm -hmm. business analysis, opportunity evaluation, and what were the priorities and the actions to get to those priorities. That's all it is. And we talk about it and some of us do it on paper, but after the exercise, we don't, we don't actually sit with it and experience it and feel it and get excited about it. Sometimes it's hard to get excited about, especially in a hard time or in a time of crisis. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. When it's crazy, and, right? When it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I've been teaching um, and working with my clients around the present retreat is the first working up to four hours. Can I think and dream and analyze and prioritize around just my business for four solid hours? And then we add, so first we work up to the four hours because I will tell you what, going back to my story, um, I had the cleanest inbox ever. The first, because <laughs> I'm like, well, what do I do here? Right? It's like making, it's like starting to journal or starting to draw. We don't necessarily know what we're doing. We just know we're, we're in the moment and we're present. So we're going to do whatever's in front of us. And so once everything's out of our sure head. To apply this. So, sorry, just yeah. so, so these four hours is yeah. what you're having individuals do once a week or day? Yes, once a week. Once a week and just set aside four hours where they are not allowed to what? They're not allowed to do anything except for look at where their business is today. Look at the opportunities that is in front of them. Look at where they want to go, figure out the gap analysis. And that's where and you help them activity. decide and, and determine what to, how to apply those four hours. In an um, well, that's what you, you apply the four, four hours to. And so, and see, that's really, it's, it's interesting because most people are like, give me a list and I'll do my list. This is not that, which is why it's hard to grasp and it's changing the way that we show up because we're creating a space and then we're like sitting in the space. It would be like going in, it would be like going in a small room um, and, or going out to a picnic bench on, on, a, on a walk and stopping and just sitting for 20 minutes for no reason at all. What do you do in that 20 minutes? It's whatever your mind wanders to as you are in that space. That's really what a present retreat is, which is why I was talking about how hard it was to get started and all the doing I had to do first to be able to create headspace so that I could be in the moment and say, here are my priorities in this four hours. Where am I? A red direction. What are we doing right now? And what are our opportunities? And do our opportunities and what we're doing align and what are we evaluating and where are we going and how do those align and then setting the priorities not only for the next week which turn into your task list and action items but also in the next year and i go really far out three to five years does this align is your vision big enough to carry you three to five years because when our vision is big enough to carry us through three to five years something like what's going on right now is a blip yep yeah, this is this is really valuable information. I love the way you've you, you introduced the expansion. It's almost like breathing in when you're all scrunched up and crunched in. Th there's no room, and as soon as you expand your lungs, suddenly the fresh air comes in, just because of that expansion into those four hours. Just starting yes. that four hours. It's a beautiful tip. 
And I can even see myself applying this, if I may, to when I'm working with individuals in our first phase of the stop phase, right? It's just stop. And, and like you were mentioning, what's your vision? What are the assets you have? And where are you heading to? And, and, and saying, here's the block of time. You fill it in with whatever comes in the mind. I love that. Beautiful yeah. job, Jess. Beautiful. So if there was one thing that you had to tell a business to do during a crazy time, regardless of what that crazy time may be, what would that be? By the way, I haven't been able to take my own advice. So take, so there's two, there's two things that I would say the, what I do in the world, first of all, is to double down, right? This is the time for business to double down do more of what you were doing, stay focused because there are so many people that are not working right now. Those who are, are going to be ready for whenever that next start is for them. So it's not, I almost want to call it like a lap. You're already on your first lap and nobody else has decided to start at the starting line. So keep going and make as many laps as you need to because that's going to be the case. Now, the part that I'm not doing for the double down is I think doubling down and, and going from four hours to eight hours would be an amazing thing, taking an entire day for a present retreat because there are too many what ifs right now. There's so much uncertainty and the more shape we can give it and the more understanding of how our business directly is impacted will allow us as we're going through our checklists every day to be able to recognize different patterns with that mindset. And I haven't been able to do that because I had other things handed to me in this whole thing, right? I am one of the families where, um, I, I am one of the families where we now have children at home for school <laughs> and granted that's almost over, Thanks but you know, easy. Uh, yeah. And the younger they are, the more intense it has been. And, and my son is finishing up the third grade. And so, um, we're very hands-on as part of that process, which meant not only did I get a new role, very supported role, but I got a new role in addition to what I was already doing. And so, you know what I did? I got to tell you, I just totally have to tell you. Oh, do tell, do tell. I quit doing my present retreat. <sighs> Within one week, I was behind, I was frazzled. I was more scared and more worried than I was up until that point. So what the present retreat really does, now having been through this and lived it, I, I know it works, it's a whole purpose. The purpose of the present retreat is to recognize that that pause, that you called it a stop, that, that stop phase is really where we can take stock and understand exactly what's happening because then anything that's coming at us, we, we can actually welcome anything with open arms. But if we were already closed and we don't have the space for it, it starts to feel overwhelming and heavy. And now I know that firsthand in, from working with Red Direction and the Red Direction team, having not done that for a few weeks, I felt really behind, even though I had done some planning, plan, 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 got it, heard it, saw it, heard it, saw it, felt it coming. Then we're in it. All these things changed and I had to make different priorities. Boy, was I wrong to make that? Was I wrong to let that go in my priority list? Because even though I had capacity, my capacity needed to be nourished. It needed to continue to have space. Just like if we don't run, we lose our conditioning. Just like if we don't exercise, we lose our conditioning. And so it, it really is we're conditioning ourselves for whatever comes our way. Well, there you have it. So I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, Jess, is number one, make sure that you create yourself that gap time, four hours a week, where you then are able to assemble the pieces that you need for your business. And number two, when it's down right now or you have any time, this is the time to keep going, dig your heels in and prepare for when those doors are open to launch so you are already have that head start and are, are, are open for business even better than before. Just, Thank you so much for joining us with Red Direction. And I'm sure people may have some additional questions or would like to reach out to you. What's the best way for someone to catch you? Absolutely. The social media for myself is, is that social media for me? Social media for me is all at reddirection.com. So that's where the podcast is. That's where you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter and um, send me an email if you prefer as well. 
And what would that email be? Oh, go to the website and use the form. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. That's how it is. And yeah, that's how it is. Another thing to business as you're going the most way that you can automate and simplify. That's how you'll make your time much more effective. So you can get some more of that present retreat. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us at another business as unusual episode and review and share. If you find that this is helpful, share it with others. Definitely go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll be sure to keep you updated with more ways to make your business flourish. I'm Ingrid Pika and look forward to hearing from you and connecting with you in the future.